Hello, everyone. We're here today. We're launching a very new book on the groundwater project. It's Flux Equations for Gas Diffusion in Porous Media. And we're here with Dave McWhorter, is the author of this book for us. And Dave is an emeritus professor in chemical and biological engineering department at the Colorado State University. Hi, Dave. Thank you very much for, for coming in today. Could you tell us a little bit about your successful career to become an emeritus professor? Was it fun? Yes. Yes, I've enjoyed, uh, I've enjoyed my academic career immensely. I started out uh, as an undergraduate in petroleum engineering at Colorado School of Mines, actually. And, uh, and I worked for the petroleum industry for a couple of years and uh, decided that I would uh, like to do something with water, which would get me back to uh, the agricultural roots that I was raised with. And uh, so I went back to school, got a PhD, and I've been working in water problems ever since. That was very good. How, how did you end up with, with diffusion then? Well, I began to be interested in uh, transport phenomena because of the, the very important role that uh, contamination has had in our groundwater systems. Uh, that, and many of which came to uh, our consciousness in about, what, 1980 or so. And uh, uh, so uh, diffusion, of course, is one part of the transport processes that we deal with. But, but uh, I think maybe you pointed out in, in those other conversations that it's usually a fairly negligible quantity with respect to advection uh, in most systems, or at least in many systems. But there are cases where diffusion is, uh, is really quite important. And that is, for example, uh, the diffusion through the gas phase in the Vado zone that lies above, say, an entrapped or, or uh, lodged uh, liquid contaminant source that's evaporating. And this upward movement by uh, diffusion into basements and crawl spaces and so forth has been a considerable problem. Uh, for many people. And, there, and there's lots of other examples. That's just an example. And, uh, but even then, I wasn't really too much involved with diffusion. I had a graduate student who uh, was searching for a PhD uh, subject. And he entered my office one day and he said, there's something about fixed law that I don't understand. There's something wrong here. And he had a little thought experiment that he shared with me. And- You have uh, to fix, fix law. That's the fix joke. Law. What did I say? Let's say you have to fix the fixed law. That's yeah, fix the fixed law. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I became interested in uh, working with diffusion at that time. And I, it's been a kind of an underlying current in my thinking for some years now. And, and then John Cherry uh, asked me one day about uh, whether uh, isotopes would diffuse in water, you know, like tritium, tritium diffusion water, because uh, he yeah. said that he had run into a situation, I think it was in France, where someone had told him, well, it doesn't diffuse because it's just water. And uh, I didn't think that would be the right answer to that problem. And so I began to think about that. And so diffusion has become kind of a, 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 an interesting problem for me. And then, you know, diffusion in the gas phase in particular has uh, not made a very serious entry into the uh, into the groundwater literature uh, over the years, and uh, uh, and where it has uh, occurred in our literature, it's uh, it's been just an adoption of the equations that we use for liquid diffusion and modified a little bit to, to account for obstructions, and uh, and they still call it fixed law. We've known for about 60 years that that's really not quite true. And uh, so with, with a few exceptions, the basic physics of uh, diffusion hasn't uh, penetrated into the earth sciences very far and uh, hasn't diffused properly into the, the uh, earth sciences. And I thought this was an opportunity to uh, perhaps add a little bit of momentum to that uh, that process. Yeah, I, th I thought that was very welcome, really. I'm, I, uh, I haven't studied much of diffusion myself because as you mentioned, 
uh, it hasn't diffused into groundwater uh, literature as it should. Well, but yeah. let, 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 let's go back a little bit. You start your book with an interesting proposal, right, that you had, how to reconcile Fick's first law and Graham's law of diffusion. How is that presented in a book? And how was that question, how that came about to you? Is that that's the student that you mentioned? Well, yeah, basically that was, uh, that was the, the question that he raised, why, why uh, he, couldn't, he couldn't use Fick's law to uh, understand some, some basic diffusion data that he had seen. And he actually had proposed it to me as a thought experiment. But it, it turns out that uh, if, if you are trying to calculate diffusion, say in pipes or in the atmosphere, places where people have uh, been most interested in applying fixed law, then, then fixed law is perfectly correct. And fixed law predicts that the, uh, for example, that uh, in a case where you have no pressure gradients, that uh, diffusion of one species, if you have a, a two, a binary system, uh, one species will diffuse in one direction, the other one will diffuse in the opposite direction at equal rates, so that there's no net flow uh, in, the, uh, in the bulk liquid. But the minute that you put some porous media in that pipe, that's no longer true. And uh, there's a momentum consideration that uh, must be accounted for because the molecules of the two species interact with the solids as well as with one another. And this interaction with the solids is handled by a momentum balance and that momentum balance leads, leads immediately to Graham's law. And uh, then when you introduce Graham's law into the picture, you must modify the previous equation uh, that Fix uh, presented uh, to account for this additional interaction. In other words, Fix law accounts for our momentum, a resistance to, to uh, diffusion as a momentum change between uh, species A molecules colliding with species B molecules and vice versa. Uh, when you're considering species B, that you must consider the momentum change that occurs when they collide with species A molecules. Now, when you put a, a uh, force medium in there, if they've got different molecular weights, they get different momentum change when they inter impact a immovable solid. And that's the origin of Graham's law. So Graham's law has to be accounted for when uh, uh, the porous medium instructions are present. That's quite interesting. So we, we, we tend to use fixed law only. We learn actually. I, I don't, don't use too much diffusion. I don't work with that, but I know that we use fixed law basically in, in groundwater initially. And that's your conclusion is that don't be correct then, right? So how no, is this presented right. in your book? Because you mentioned, well, the, the momentum is important and that's why Graham, Graham laws is, is so, uh, came into play when you were discussing, right? Yeah. Well, so how let, me, let me try to clarify that a little bit more. Yep. Fixed law, as it was originally stated, accounts pro properly for the resistance to diffusion as a result of momentum interchange among the molecules uh, and doesn't account for any loss in momentum due to impact or collisions with solids. So the minute that you have solids in the system, then you have to account for the change in momentum that results when these molecules collide with the solids. And so that's the basic change and that introduces a number of things, one of which is uh, Graham's law. But, but one thing to be really important is that if, if you have a system where the resistance to diffusion is primarily a result of intermolecular collisions, then you don't have to account for the solids. And that's, that's why in liquids, you don't see this. Uh, you don't see Graham's law in liquids because the liquid molecules are so close together. It's such a compact system that uh, almost all of the resistance to momentum is intermolecular. The solids don't have much to do with it. 
you can't translate the materials that are in my book to liquids. They don't apply. There are two differences. That's important. So, so for, for, for diffusion in groundwater, that doesn't apply then, right? That's right. Okay, for solutes in groundwater, it's just for gases being transported in uh, Vedo zone, for example, right? That's correct. Yeah, good, good. Most traditional books mention molecular diffusion coefficient, but not the Knudsen diffusion coefficient. Why is that? And what's the importance of this Knudsen coefficient for? Well, the Knudsen, diff the Knudsen diffusion coefficient enters into our considerations because of the momentum that is lost by the molecules when they collide with solids. So uh, if you're talking about the diffusion in liquids, the, the collision of the uh, molecules with solids is immaterial. It's not important compared to the momentum lost by intermolecular collisions. In gases, uh, the, you have a case where we call what we call a molecular diffusion regime, which is dominated by intermolecular collisions. Uh, even then, you have some effects of the solids uh, in, in the gas uh, diffusion equations. And that, that effect uh, appears in our equations uh, in the form of, uh, well, it includes the coefficient, uh, which we call the Knudsen diffusion coefficient. The Knudsen diffusion coefficient occurs in every flux equation for gases, except in one case. And that is the case where you have no pressure gradients and you're in the molecular diffusion regime. Every other case, you're going to have to deal with a Knudsen diffusion coefficient. So even if it even if it's a, a fairly coarse grain material, you have to do to account for the uh, the uh, Newton diffusion coefficient. For someone who's who's willing to download your book and watching our interview here, most people are, who are working with uh, gas intrusion today, gas intrusion into basements and and things like that, this is applied. The diffusion applies. So how important is that book for this field of application uh, uh, in hydrogeology? Well, you know, that's really a very good question because I think it depends a little bit on your philosophy. Uh, it turns out that I think we'll find that there are many, many, many cases where you don't have to, to uh, complicate the problem the way I did in this, in this chapter this, or this book. Uh, you can use simpler forms, the, the ones that are classical and traditional in our work. There are some that uh, cases where the pressure gradients that are caused by diffusion and uh, the uh, Graham's diffusion uh, law are important and must be considered. But uh, I think they're important because I think it's important for people to understand the basic physics of the equations that they're using in the first place. Even if they, uh, if they just use Fick's law and, and don't understand Graham's law and, uh, and the interaction with the solids, then uh, even though they may have been able to take a simpler approach, I think it's, you're missing something. You're missing something of the richness in our science if you, if you don't understand those basics. Well, I, I, I tend to, uh, to agree with you. I, I worked, I, like I mentioned to you previously, uh, I worked with multi-phase flow. And most people just don't understand the multi-phase flow. And they go with the, the, the simple equation, you know, and, and, you know, they survive. But they're missing, <laughs> they're missing an important, you know, understanding that will enrich the, the whole work. So how would that, uh, how would the, the knowledge of your book would enrich their world? of knowledge, uh, what, what do they gain by learning diffusion? I, I like your book, like, let me say that. Well, uh, I think I kind of answered that in the sense that I'm not sure about you and I'm not sure about anyone else really, but I, I'm kind of sure about the way I look at the world. And when I look at the world, if I, if I see a calculation and I don't understand that calculation in its, Pretty much in its entirety, then then I'm uh, I leave I'm left a little bit uh, 
lost. And so I, I think it just increases uh, this book, I think, will increase the, the uh, richness of this science because it, it presents the basic physics of uh, the diffusion process that you might otherwise miss completely. Yep, that's true. That's, oh, especially for, for, for hydrogeologists, I do agree because we, we have very little understanding of diffusion, just, diffusion, just a little bit. Right, we most work with, with uh, flow equation and transport equation. And diffusion for, for gases is, is quite important, especially today when we're dealing with contamination of volatile organics, for example, right? That's true, yes. So how, how do you recommend this field for, for a beginner? Someone who who's thinking of that, is that an appliance? Well, I think, uh, I think it'll be most useful to people who have read the literature to some degree about diffusion and are confused about why there appears to be contradictions in the literature. And uh, so it'll be most helpful to them. It will explain why these contradictions are apparently there. And, uh, uh, but I don't think that a beginner is going to take these equations and begin to make calculations with them uh, right away, no. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. Well, I have a, a personal question. When we, we use, when you talk about diffusion, you usually use tortuosity, right? You, you have that uh, on your book as well. Uh, but one question is, isn't tortuosity, uh, in, in your book you use that, isn't tortuosity a 1D, 1D measurement or, or, or can we translate that perfectly for a 3D uh, porous medium? You know what I mean? Because usually I, I, you, you get the path, right? You, the length, that's how it's originally uh, defined or explained at least. Uh, is that perfectly translated into a 3D? Well, I think at any, at any point in the, in the flow or in the diffusion process, you have a, you have a vector of uh, flux that's in a particular direction and that uh, tortuosity will apply in that direction. Now, it may well be that tortuosity is anisotropic. Yes, that's right. And I, I have not included the anisotropy uh, at all. So, and in fact, this entire chapter is in one dimension. Yes, one dimension. The reason yes. I did it in one dimension with no vector notation is because those things often frighten beginners away. And uh, I was hoping that I would try to mitigate that as best I could. And I just might mention that I think one of the reasons why these ideas that are in this book, by the way, they're not original with me. You know, they, I've, I've taken these from the literature for the most part. One of the reasons why they haven't penetrated very deeply into the groundwater field is because they basically come from what is called the dusty gas model. And the dusty gas model was developed by, by nuclear physicists or physical chemists and uh, their literature is is very difficult to read for somebody who's uh, educated in geology for example yes true and uh, uh, it's, it's highly physical it uh, got higher, a lot of higher level mathematics in it and uh, and so when I started to write this this book I decided that it wouldn't be fruitful for me to just present the uh, dusty gas model, nor would it be fruitful to just present the equations which come from it. So I had to find something I thought was in between where you would gain some insight as to where these equations came from, but at the same time, you wouldn't have to go to all the effort to understand all the aspects of the uh, dusty gas model, which can be intimidating. I agree. I agree. So basically, the, the, you kept the, the, the concept safe, right, to understand, as I, as I saw, but, but, but the, all the, the mathematical complexities could be, you know, left aside a little bit, so we can, we can understand how it goes. And for those who, who are really willing to, to go in depth, they can, they, can, they can look for it. You have the references there, don't you? That's what I've seen. Yeah, that's what I hope will happen. Yeah, good, good. All right, thank you very much.
Would you have your final considerations? That was very nice talk to you. You have a very nice background with your horses there. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you. Congrats. To I'll the tell people. my wife you said so. <laughs> yes, uh, that's what I meant. <laughs> uh, just, just for a moment. I think I met you at Waterloo once. Have you? Yeah. Wasn't there quite a few of uh, Brazilians going to school at Waterloo at one time? Oh, yes. A few yes. years ago. Yes. Yeah, I was there visiting. Uh, I was in Waterloo on sabbatical at one time. And I. When was that? Uh, 1985. 85. No, I was there in 19. I arrived there in 1992. 1992. Yeah. And stayed but there. I visited several. I visited several times after that. With my sabbatical era. I'm pretty sure I met you at that yeah, time. Yeah, I, 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 your name is quite familiar. Yes. Yes. I also worked in multi phase flow. That was my basic discipline as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's very good. That's very good. <laughs> Why don't you write something on multi phase flow? That's a tough subject. Well, I got kind of tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you don't have to. You don't. You don't have to to tell me. I know that. <laughs> oh, but it is quite interesting. So. Oh yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it is quite interesting. Yes, I like it. I like it, and it's quite difficult, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's harder than diffusion. Oh yes, I know. <laughs> it's much harder. Yes, but it's you know the harder you know more fun we have studying, right? That's that's correct. That's what I do. <laughs> if it's too easy, what's the point studying it, right? <laughs> yeah, you lose interest quickly. Yes, <laughs> that's true. That's true. All right. So, could you could you make your final considerations for those who are reading your book, please? I'd like people to download and and look at this book in the spirit in which I wrote it in the first place. And that spirit was that that uh, I think it's important that people have an appreciation for the basic physics uh, of what they're making calculations about and to just simply adopt an equation without any understanding of where that equation comes from or what it means physically uh, is not uh, something that I uh, like to do. And I'm, I'm hoping that this will help people that are working with diffusion problems to have a better feel. Uh, just for an example, if you take Darcy's Law, for example, we used Darcy's Law for 100 years or so before M. King Hubbard actually showed how you could uh, kind of derive, if you will, Darcy's law from the Navier-Stokes equations. And, uh, you know, and, and it's, once he's done that, it's clear that it's just a balance of forces. And uh, that's something that everybody kind of knows a little bit about. And I hoping that uh, my discussion of fixed law and Graham's law and these equations uh, have the same kind of an effect. They're really just a balance of forces. I, I hope people will understand that and not be uh, afraid to dig into this because it's not as difficult as it might look at first. Yes. Well, I, I uh, for me, it was very good because I, 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 as I told you, I haven't studied diffusion before and I read your book and I like it because you know it opened my mind to those to the points that you presented that was very very good so I'm, I'm grateful for your work at least for that that was very good <laughs> well thank you I thank you <laughs> all right thank you very much it was very nice talking to you very nice, nice talking to you as well I I hope after the pandemics I could visit Colorado and I'll yeah, be please do uh, I, I would be very glad if you could invite me to see some of your horses there. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. Well, if, perhaps you, you're, dealing, you're dealing quite a little bit with Eileen, aren't you, down at Mines? Oh, yes, very, well, a lot. If you ever come up to visit her on a professional basis, come on up here and we're just uh, uh, an hour away. Oh, really? That's very close. Very yeah. close. All right. Thank you very much. You're very okay, nice. Thank you. Congratulations for your book. You've done a great job. Thank you, Dave. Take thank care. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Nice.